Um, we are on our fourth time period that makes up what we call prehistoric Georgia. Uh, the Mississippian period lasts from about A.D. 700 to A.D. 1600. Good idea of when the Mississippian period ended. Unlike those other dates that are estimations, this one's pretty rock solid. Um, we know uh, the Mississippian period ended right at 1600. Um, and there's a reason why. Would you like to know? Okay. AD 700, right? To AD 1600. Right about in here, there's something that happens. 1492. Anybody remember what happened in 1492? Columbus sailed the ocean. 1492, Columbus sailed the ocean blue. What did that do? That was Americo Vespucci. Um, in fact, Columbus never sets foot on the North American continent. Two additional trips, he never gets to America, um, but yet he is credited with discovering America. Um, but who to this new world? E W T European white trash. Okay. What happens to the Native American population after 1492? 108 years, it decreases by 90 some odd percent. So we know what happened to the Mississippian Indians. We know what ended that time period in our history. But what about the Mississippian people? They, they lived in tribes just like their um, woodland ancestors. They lived in tribes, but they took it a step further. They bonded together as tribes and created what became nations. And so in Georgia, we had two different nations. We had the Cherokee Nation, it's probably the best known. We had the Creek Nation, which was actually larger than the Cherokee Nation was. And actually, um, in the next week or so, we're going to actually look at a group of Native Americans that lived on the coast of Georgia. So they, they bond together. They become nations. Um, that allows for more dis distribution or division of labor. Um, there's more protection. There's more safety. There's more food. Because now... Um, they have a lot of people farming. They're getting better and better at farming. They're learning. In fact, now they grow enough food. Not only do they have enough to eat, they can trade it and they can keep part of it. They can put up a supply for either or what happens if there's a drought? What happens to your crops? They die. They die. And you're okay if you've put up a food supply that will last a while. And they're growing things, again, like corn, maize, or, or maize, beans, pumpkin, squash. Um, I mean, the, the same things that we grow in our gardens today, the Mississippian Indians were growing. One of the cool things about the Mississippian period is they have more time to devote to the arts. And we're talking about the visual arts, things like pottery, um, jewelry, clothing, but also the performing arts. Um, dance, music, and both of those forms of the art are very important in a society. Think about your life for a moment. Um, and I dare say there's probably not a day that goes by that you don't listen to music. Okay? That's, that's, that's part of that performing arts. Or you watch something on television. Or maybe even you watch a movie. Or... You know, you watch a movie about music or about dancing or whatever. That's, that's the arts, and it, it enriches our lives. It enhances our lives. That's why I I'm, I'm really love what we do here with exposing you to both of those, to the performing arts and to the visual arts. Um, their homes are made out of wattle and daub, and that sounds like a dance. Maybe that's something we should do Monday. You create your own waddle and daub dance. 
Daub. Not that. Daub. So, um, their houses, their construction um, techniques are improving. Um, protection is not just in the form of people with bows and arrows. Protection is in the form of things that are constructed. The moat and the palisade. The palisade is just a really big, thick wooden wall. All right, a couple of pictures. Picture here is a Mississippian city. Um, and if you notice, shh, if you notice, there are homes inside the wall, there are homes outside the wall. Those that are outside the wall are probably farming, they're fishing, they're providing food. But what if there's danger? Where are they coming? Inside, inside the wall. Well, they are. They're close enough they can get inside if they need to. Um, and then this, which is apparently funny, is a, um, a burial mound, an Indian burial mound. Um, that would be um, where the chief was buried or the priest. Somebody that's important to the nation or to the tribe would be buried in the Indian mound. Their families would be buried with them, of course. Not at the same time, or maybe. Uh, this is actually in. The, uh, the Old Mulgee National Indian Mounds, which is now um, a national park. Uh, it's our newest national park. This is not a burial mound. This would be where they had um, religious ceremonies where you know, they would have a meeting of the tribal elders, um, that sort of thing. And then there are burial mounds there as well. If you've ever been to um, Helen, Georgia, Right outside of Helen, there's a, it's a farm. Oh, yeah. And on that farm is a burial mound in the middle of the cow pasture. And on top of the burial mound is a gazebo that the original owner of the farm built because um, it was a good place for Sunday afternoon picnics. Yeah, why not? All right, and then finally some technological innovation. Pottery is improved. The bow and arrows improved. Um, you know, it's not just used for hunting. It's made used and made for defense. And of course, uh, the burial mounds are still very important. Um, they're building structures to use for religious ceremonies. Uh, burial mounds are for the priests, for the chiefs, important people inside. All right. In your addendum, your addendum, page six. You're going to need your textbook as well. Georgia, a brief history. And on page six, it says. Read pages one through four to coming of the Spaniards. So if you open it to page one, it says natives, actually it says chapter one, natives, Europeans, and the founding of Georgia, pre-Columbian Georgia. We're reading the section about pre-Columbian Georgia. It ends on page four, where it says coming of the Spaniards. So you're to read those four pages, really about three and a three and two-thirds, and answer the ten questions on page six. Do it on notebook paper. Do not try to do it in your book. Um, you are welcome, of course, to write in those addendums, but um, do write in my textbook. I wish you could, but you Shh. And I'm going to answer a question for you. It's a question that some question is no. Oh. 
I've got the questions. So, you don't have to write the questions. Okay. Thank you so much not having to make it like a question. We had to do it last year and I never forget that. Uh, I know. I, mean, I, I know. 